Hello there, I am Rafael Di Furia, back at it again on another Friday night for another episode of Not Your Average Globetrotter. And in this Friday night episode, we are going to be doing an interview episode with Sabino Corcio from Growing Up Italian, a group of young Italian Americans who discuss some of the topics that are at the forefront of the community's goings on, what's happening in the United States from, or just in general, talking about life as an Italian American. Sabino is a first generation Italian American and he's spent time in both countries and definitely has some experience in both places. So I wanted to bring him on to talk about that, to talk about being a first generation American and having that pull from both the United States and from Italy and his culture and also his experiences. And in this episode, we'll get into a lot of topics and even later in the episode, we'll get into some topics that might be a little bit more difficult. So be sure that you stick around because it gets really interesting. Also, just one little thing. This channel on YouTube is getting close to 20,000 subscribers. So I thought, you know what? It's time to have a little bit of fun change things up just a little bit keep it familiar but just just give a little refresh so a little bit of uh, just an update because it was about time so <laughs> hope you enjoy the episode and enjoy the new look and new sound of not your average globetrotter hello there sabino and welcome thank you so much for coming on and being a part of this uh, how are you doing today man I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. It's it's so exciting for me to have you on because I have been following you. I don't know how many years, but I know it was early on in your video podcasting when I kind of found out about you guys. So I don't know what's this maybe four years, three years ish, something like that. So, yeah, no, it's it's so cool what you guys do. And you've really become this this pillar in the Italian American community. And I have a lot of respect for what you guys do by keeping that Amer Italian American community alive. And maybe just before we get too much into this, just to maybe give those who might not have an idea of who you are uh, a little bit idea. Do you want to maybe introduce yourself, who you are and what you do? Yeah. So my name is Sabino Curcio, or if you want to say in Italian, Sabino Curcio. Um, I'm an Italian American. Both of my parents were born in Italy. I'm first generation. Uh, me, my cousin, and sister have a page called Growing Up Italian, where we basically connect Italians around the world through memes, videos, podcasts, all things media. Um, me and Raphael connected through Clubhouse, which yes, I'm sir. sure a lot of people are loving that app. But yeah, it's been a definite time suck and time drain. <laughs> definitely. I mean, I like it because... Uh, it's super easy to connect with people. I mean, even for guests yeah. for the podcast, it's been yeah. uh, it's been great to meet people too. And uh, I, I like what you do. I like your story. Uh, thank you, you man. I appreciate cool story, that. Man. No, I've been. That you were born here and moved to Italy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's it. That's exactly. I was born in the states. Lived mostly on the west coast, and now I live here. But I, I've been wanting to get in touch with you for. I don't know how long it's basically since I first met you and then or not first met you, but since I first heard about you and what you guys do. And then I saw you on Clubhouse. I was like, no way. Sabino is on of all people. And so I was like, OK, I'm just going to have to reach out. Now is the time. Let's do it. Absolutely. And so especially because of your background, being Italian-American, first generation, that gives you a unique perspective on the Italian-American community and the Italian community. I, I know growing up, you used to spend summers in Italy. Yeah. How was that for you going between life in America and life in Italy? I'm not going to lie. There was a lot of summers I didn't like it. And it'd be mm. like, especially when I was young from like, you know, like seven, eight, nine, ten, because you go to school you over here, you have all your friends here. And then I was right. going to Italy for a month and like, you know, it was especially hard when like I was big on the video games because mm. like, you know, where we come from, it's like, you know, they don't have PlayStation <laughs> and stuff like that. Right. So I was like, you know, I was like always playing video games. And when I was going to Italy, I'm like, you know, this, this sucks. Like, and then my mom like would always explain it, but look, you, you could play in the street here and you could do this. Cause like where my nonna lived was like, uh, you ever see like 
the mountain towns, but like it's not really close to the road. So like you park your car and then you got to walk like through this like little yeah. istret, istret the classic color, Italian know? village. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So like, you know, there's no cars where my nonna lived and there's a bunch wow. of kids. So I started to like, like it a little bit more once I got a little older, you know? And then when I became a teenager, I really liked it because I kind of wasn't allowed to go out drinking and stuff like that in America, but in Italy you mm-hmm. could, cause like anything goes, <laughs> you know? So right. that's when I kind of started liking Italy a lot, you know? That that's interesting. So what, like 15, 16, yeah. 18, 14, yeah. 15, 16. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it really years. is amazing. Oh, cause also we're pretty close in age. You're 32. Yeah. I'm 30. 30. Ah, sorry. My apologies. I'm 30 also. I'm 30 also. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you said you're 32, you know, like, no, no, no. I thought for some reason, I thought you said that you were 30, like three, two. Um, no, but no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm 29, just getting close to that 30 mark. But so we grew up like very same kind of era, very same kind of like yep. reference points in some ways. Yep. So I can only imagine what that must've been like, especially I was also one of those kids loved the video games N 64, Xbox, whatever yeah. it was. But yeah. when we were, that age, like 14, 15, was still the laws in Italy that basically as long as you could have somebody there with you, you could have some alcohol. But even then, nobody yeah, cared. <laughs> nobody cared. And it was funny because, I mean, when we were growing up, remember, like, we used to have dial-up internet with, like, the oh, chat God, room. Like, you know oh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I had no internet <laughs> in Italy for a while. Like, some, right. people, some people in Italy, I mean, from where I come from, they – there's like maybe a couple of Wi-Fi. It's a little better now, but I'm saying like three years ago, right. maybe five people had Wi-Fi, you know? Now really? it's like everybody has Wi-Fi, but uh. some people just don't want to pay for it, you know? Yeah, no, I don't I don't blame them. <laughs> Only reason yeah. why I have it at home, like I have a home line is just because I need it for work. But your oh, yeah. family is from Salerno, no? Yep. Provincia di Salerno. But we're not really from oh, okay. Salerno. You know, that's Close a big enough. smoke screen. <laughs> um, we're an hour away, you know, and like we're from a little, uh, little town, little, little town, man. Like there's 2000 people and, that live in my town. Oh, wow. So that's like real Italian village life. Like, yeah, your nonna or your nonni are like classic Italian nonni. From yeah, the like farmers, shepherds, you know, wow. like we're about that life. <laughs> so how is that juxtaposition going from life in New York I mean, you mentioned already that you had that difficulty with the uh, with the video games and electronics and internet and connecting with yeah. your friends. Mm-hmm. But what was that like, really, to get thrown from life in New York to life out in out in the sticks, so to speak? I mean, was it really? I think I think it was like just learning how to appreciate it. Um, mm. I mean, there's like this one instance I'll never forget. This moment, I think, like this moment, kind of changed my life forever to be honest, but I remember, um, it was me, it was me, my sister, and then my, my, uh, dad's brother's kids. My dad's brother wasn't there because he's a landscaper here in, uh, in the States. So summertime, he would be like very, very busy to come out to Italy, but he would always send his kids. And that's really when I would hang out with them the most because they're from Long Island and I'm from Brooklyn. So it's like, we would always spend our summers together. And I remember we like had lunch with our, uh, with my dad's uncle, our Zio. And then my mm-hmm. dad took us all for a ride. And he's like, this is where we used to watch sheep, me and your dad's like saying that to, you know, his, his, uh, nieces and nephews and me and my sister. And, uh, you know, he would like to say stories like about how they would build the fire and sleep there tonight. And like, we were like, my family was literally like sheep herders, man, like, Wow. You know, you can't make this up. So, uh, you know, my dad and my, my Zio both, like, left Italy. Um, my dad originally went to Switzerland when, meanwhile, my my Zio came to America. And then my dad came to visit my Zio here and then ended up staying. But, uh, like, once I, like, started, like, you know, to appreciate, like, okay, this is where I came from. And, you know, this is what my family did. And, like... Mm-hmm. Even till my nonna passed away, like she was walking to the farm every day wow. to like dig potatoes one day. Um, 
That's he asparagi, awesome. he asparagi another day, he oregano another day. Like wow. literally, like you go to her farmhouse and she had all her like you know vegetables and a couple of fruits, her chickens, a donkey. So like you wow. know, I was about that. Like my family comes from that man. So I learned to appreciate that. Uh, you know, that's where we came from, and this is kind of where we're at today. You know. And how was that? Also, from the flip side. How was that for you growing up in America and being first generation Italian American? Like, did you ever have struggles with English? Did kids treat you differently because your family were immigrants or your parents at least were immigrants? Not, not really me. No, I, uh, I mean, I didn't struggle with it, but my mom says when she came here that they used to make fun of her and her brothers and sisters, you know, but I really never caught that like that, you know, uh huh. I you never know, really I, had I mean, that problem. I, that's interesting to me that you never went through that issue. I'm, I'm wondering, do you feel as though it's a to do with the location that you grew up in and there were so many Italians maybe, around? Or? Maybe in Brooklyn. Yeah, that's why. But like, I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of my friends like that said they were Italian, they would like, like, let's say growing up elementary school, you know, when uh, you're on the basketball team and then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. because like at the time, all my cousins, we all went to one school. So it was like uh -huh. like 20 of us, you know? And oh, like, so it was uh, like, it was just the Curcio Central out there. <laughs> well, not even Curcio because my dad's Curcio. My mom is the one with all the brothers and sisters. So like, ah, it's, okay. it's all like, you know, Lagercio, Mazza, D'Amato. Okay, it's like, you. you know, it's four, there's like four or five different last names, but, you know, we're all, um, because my mom's one of eight, but six are girls, two are boys. So. Wow. You know, we all have different last names because of that. But that's a good um, old school Italian family right there. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, when we would go to school, you know, my my nonno passed away before I was born, and my nonna always mm. wore black. So like, mm. people would see my nonna and be like, "Why does your nonna wear black?" Like to some people, right. like that's super weird. But like yeah. to me, both of my nonnas wore black my whole life. Like both of my nonnas passed away before. I was born, so wow. I never had a no-no, but like they always wore black. And like even growing up, I'll be like, I wouldn't understand. And then like you see other Italian women from this area wear black. And then in Italy, especially the village where we come from, it's like everybody wears black, you know? Right. So that's kind of like the one thing I would say like was a little different for me versus some other Italian Americans, you know? No, it's interesting that you had that perspective of being that first generation, that that bridge between the two countries. And just, I guess, also, I mean, even growing up in the States, did you ever have any kind of interactions with Italians out there, Italian-Americans, I'll specify in this case, that they would say, hey, I'm Italian or, hey, I'm I'm this or I'm that. Did you ever have any kind of sense of like, these guys are a little bit different. They've their families are a little bit different. They act a little different or anything along those lines. Uh, you know, like with this, with this area in particular, Williamsburg, there was a lot of Italians here, like, especially growing mm -hmm. up. Like, I feel like it changed mm -hmm. a lot, maybe in the last 15 years. So like until I was 15 years mm -hmm. old, even a little later, cause like over on this whole area, there's a lot of, like um societies so right. like from when i was young a lot of kids i met from my neighborhood like when we did our lady of snow which is like from my dad's town i would meet like all my young paisans all right like from the area or who lives you know 15 minutes away but their family comes to celebrate august 5th but then you kind of see those kids in italy too and you're like oh you're here and it's like i kind of bonded with huh. a lot with the other first italian first generation right. Italian Americans too. And like, once you go to school and see kids that are a little like further removed from that, you see a big difference, right. but you know, we had our society and then we had another society, which is uh, a town Tejano, which is like 30 minutes away from my town. But like all my best friends growing up were from that town. So it's like, then when we were, got older and went to Italy, it's like, I'm going to go to Tejano for a day. And then, like, they would come by signs and we'd go to the beach because my town's close to the beach. So, like, you know, uh -huh. I, I kind of made a lot of my friends from being first-generation Italian-American, you know? 
Fascinating. So do you feel like that's something that's even continued into your adult life where you feel that little extra connection with the first generations, first generation Italian Americans? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't speak uh, proper Italian by any means, but, but you speak you know, I, not, not proper. I speak dialect. It's, okay. it's really, I uh, really should focus on it now that I like, right. um, I'm seeing that, uh, you know, there's a, a business end to this oh, for me, you know? So yeah, I'm yeah. like, I, I do need to like master my proper Italian. Um, um but yeah, I, I really do get along with, uh, people like me that speak dialect, first generation Italian. And even if they right. aren't, don't speak a lot of words, but they know the punchlines, you know? So I get you. Yeah. So. so do you even feel as though maybe speaking in dialect has also created a, a, a different kind of connection? Yeah. Like sometimes when I hear certain dialect words, I start cracking up, you know, because, or like those old sayings, you know, like, right. You know, like those, I grew up on that stuff, man. Those Italian parables, you know, like <laughs> the, the sayings that are a hundred years old, you know? Right. No. And I've heard you speak a couple of times and it's like every once in a while, like I know you're speaking in a dialect, but it's like, it all sounds pretty damn good to me. <laughs> Because sometimes yeah, I just don't pick why, it up. Because that's because you're you're you were born in America, but like I got right. put on stage on Clubhouse one day, and it was like two thousand people in the room, and uh-huh. they're all like from the north. Because one of my friends, right. Christy, she you know you met Christy that, that she has the rooms all I the time. Think so. She works yeah, for yeah, so. uh, Radio DJ, mm-hmm. so um, mm-hmm. she brought me on the panel, and then like they uh. You know, it was right after we hosted the Italian Tinder room, and like, you know, I, I'm using uh, Clubhouse yeah, as yeah, a, yeah. I'm using Clubhouse as a fun platform, man. Like, just to, yeah, sometimes for my own entertainment, like just to laugh and you know, like right, you know, have some fun. So they were asking me a question about the Italian Tinder, like, oh, how many people were in the room? And this is like a room with two thousand people. Yeah, so yeah. I was like. Uno and the and then everybody was cracking up because like I should have said uno cento or due cento, you know, like right. I know I know what it is, but it just doesn't come it doesn't come out like that, man. You know, that's interesting. No, I I think I don't know if I was there for that room, but I know I was definitely in another room with her, and when you guys were talking, because also like in those rooms, there are always those. Italians that come in and they're like, ma perché siamo in Italia, siamo yeah, italiani, yeah. perché non parliamo in italiano, yeah, ma che cazzo time, fai? All the time, all the time. So somebody <laughs> did that, somebody did that the other day and I just, I kicked them down to the audience. I'm like, we we're just talking for an hour in English. You want to come and change everything? Like you either like, enjoy the convo right. or like get out. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, no, somebody, I mean, and especially... It's called Growing Up Italians. It's not written in Italian. And all of the names are always written in English anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I do that, you know. But um, I got to admit, man, like this platform we have on that app now is so incredible because you really start – I mean, we hear about it all the time about Mm -hmm. like Italians that move to Germany, UK, Mm -hmm. Switzerland, Australia – so many in like Tokyo and North Korea and yeah. Korea. Like I'm like, what? Yeah. Like this is crazy. So like, no, I'm honestly, there with you. It, I've been having a lot of fun like meeting people that like go through the same thing we kind of go through, but in a different country. And that's really what mm-hmm. you know, growing up Italian is all about. Is like finding people with the similarities and keeping the culture alive. Like just because right. I may ha- may have kids. Or, you know, someone that's Italian has kids with someone that's a different race. Your kid's Mm -hmm. still going to be Italian. It all depends on you to push that culture and, you know, embody it in them, you know? So that's what this is really all about to me, at least. No, it's it's always been fascinating to me, really, especially since moving to Italy and really even more so since starting my my project on YouTube, uh, this kind of video podcast and video blog series getting in touch with so many different parts of the Italian com- or Italian diaspora that I just, I knew they existed on some level, but I just never growing up in the States, like Italian American, we are the Italians. We are the only Italians outside of Italy, but there are so many other communities, Italian, Brazilians, Italian, Argentinians, Australians yeah. as a huge community yeah. there, New Zealand, yeah. 
all over the world, and it's to me absolutely Venice, fascinating. Venezuela, so look at that. Venezuela yeah. too. Yeah, so no, there's many, a guy bro, who so I know many. who who's from Venezuela, and he got his dual citizenship to as a, as a way of escaping that situation. Because I mean, yeah. uh, to the the situation going on in Venezuela, and I mean, it's, it's isn't it, isn't it funny that some people left Italy because they mm-hmm. like we're going to America, and then they end up in Argentina or somewhere that's like kind of could be even worse than Italy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? At like, least in the modern day, because at that point yeah. in time, it was hard to know because like in Brazil, for example, especially in the South and even in the state of Sao Paulo, they were just giving land away, crazy amounts of land. Yeah. And especially for the people who came from Northern Italy, leaving in that earlier diaspora, starting in, I guess, the mid to late 1800s. Uh-huh. And just that just huge community that went there they went with the only thing that they know is there's land they didn't know what kind of land until they yeah, got yeah there. exactly exactly you know there's so many stories too about um like families having six seven kids and then mm-hmm. like just sending kids to america and yeah. getting adopted like i know three different stories like that you know the church like sending kids to america man and it's crazy because like you hear so That's many stories about that too, you know, like there's a yeah, whole story. I actually story. haven't heard so many of those. I know they exist. So, that, but... so that I'll give you, I'll give you a quick, the quick version of this story. Please, so, yes, um, please. So, uh, you know, like I said, our fam- my family's involved with this society here called Our Lady mm-hmm. of Snow. So, right, there's this young girl, and she came here with her brother, right from mm-hmm. from my town in Sanza, and she had the like the a picture, a prayer card of Our Lady of Snow. Mm -hmm. So she sent a letter to the society over here. Like, this is my name. This is what I have. I was just wondering, like, if I could trace back to find out who my family is. So long story short, my dad gets this letter and he knew (laughs) the family from Italy. No way. So, so like, it, it was a crazy thing, man. Like, my dad, like I was, I always tease him that he's like, um, like a uh, Doctor Phil or something for this, you know? Because like, <laughs> what happened is then the lady came, the sister, one of the sisters from Italy, came to mm-hmm. New York to meet the sister. The brother had passed away, so it was just the sister, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, we basically had like a whole party pre-COVID, you know, this is a while ago, wow. and it's like you know, a hundred people in the hall. And nobody like said, this is where it was like crazy. Nobody said like, this is your sister. Like they let them roam in the room until they bumped into each other. And then Whoa. like when they knew, like, you know, this lady that, you know, she was uh, for adopt, she was adopted. She yeah. didn't speak any Italian. And that other, uh-huh. the lady from Italy didn't speak any English, but like, they just like looked at each other and like hugged and like. It was like an incredible Dude, moment. I'm going to get teary-eyed. You better stop while you're ahead. <laughs> everybody was crying, and it was like, it was wow. crazy. It was like one of those stories you get goosebumps. But, Holy um, crap, I'm I actually mean, tearing up. This is a beautiful story, man. Like, yeah, really. It's a good story. And that lady actually, um, fast forward, she actually came to to my hometown, Sansa, after that summer, and she saw mm-hmm. like our tradition and all that stuff. Because, I mean, for me personally, I think one thing that, made me want to go to Italy so much is like the tradition we have for our saint. Mm -hmm. Like it's super, super, super extreme. Like the most extreme of extreme. Cause like in Italy, everybody has their, you know, they have a parade or you walk through the town with a saint, whatever, you know, mine is like super, super extreme. Like it's like, especially in that part of the country. Like once you get like, south it, the southern chunk of italy or really anywhere roman south you just yeah. see this explosion of culture and the the old school ways that it's it's this part of the culture that unfortunately as somebody who lives in the north i feel as though sometimes it gets a little bit lost and it's almost unfortunate well, I feel in some like ways the north is like uh big cities too you know so like mm, let's say yeah it's, in, it's a little more sorry what were you saying it's like harder to see it i think in the big cities you know because like if you're just passing by, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? When you go to these True. little towns, when you go to these little towns, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this is all they got. No, definitely. This is all they got, you know? No. 
Well, also in the South, people end up being more religious than the North, just in general to begin with. I mean, even if yeah, you're going to some of the Northern too. cities, like, I guess you like, you'll, you'll, yeah, you'll have like a lot more atheists or people who just don't connect with it because that's not necessarily part of their culture where some of the big, uh, and really the, 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 the part of Italian American culture that we really get in America that we see is very much based on that, like Southern style, like. It, it it ends up being very similar in America, in the United States. Look at Texas; everything is big and overdone, and it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nah, nah, man, so, I agree. Just, I agree. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those things where like you, it's looking at different countries and how there's those those parallels and similarities, even if it's completely different cultures. Even if you look at Germany, sometimes in the South they can have even be a little bit more on the religious side. There, I'm not saying that all countries further in the South end up being more religious, but just interesting, at least in this little context here. Yeah, uh, but now, I mean, maybe with the saints, to... with the saints in all those towns in Italy that I've mm-hmm. been to, I mean, because I look, I I've been to Italy thirty times, man. Like twenty seven wow. or twenty eight of them was in summer. So let's say when you're in, you know, this hometown, you know that Saturday there's a feast in that town and another town, and then Sunday there's something going on in this town, and it's like all these little towns actually have like, you know, kind of have their own stereotypes. Like, Oh, you're from there. That's why you're like that. You know, like <laughs> you kind of like, cause like, it's crazy because people like, all right, my mom's side and my dad's side, this is how like mm-hmm. deep it goes for me. My mom is one of eight. My dad is one of six. Right. Wow. Every single person that got married, my my dad's brothers and sisters, my mom's brothers and sisters, they all married somebody from around our region. Nobody married anyone from Calabria, from Sicily, from the north. Mm -hmm. It's all like one town that's 20 minutes away, one town that's 30 minutes away. You know what I'm saying? So like to me, it's crazy. So like me, like, you know, discussions are like, some people are like, oh, I'm half Italian, half Irish. Mine's like, I'm 50% Sanzez, 25% Sanzez, <laughs> and 25% Casadez because my grand, you know what I mean? Like, that's right. how, that's how, like, it was for me growing up. And then I'm, my cousin would be like, I'm 50 and 50 because my mom's, you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, I get you. That's how we grew up, you know? That's fascinating. I mean, especially like when you're that, that first generation, you're not as far removed. So there's been less of a chance for those different bloodlines to kind of come into to contact, like Irish, Jewish, yeah. German, whatever the hell. And I mean, even for you, though, having grown up in America and having this very strong cultural identity. I mean, look at the colors behind you. Look at the colors on your shirt. Yeah, man. You We're are. Y- you, you <laughs> are Italian. You are Italian-American. Yeah. This is you. Of course. Yeah. But do you feel more connected to one country than the other? I don't know, man. I, I feel connected to people, man. Like not necessarily country. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I was working on getting my dual citizenship and then Mm -hmm. coronavirus happened. And I don't know, the (laughs) times work super slow, but I literally have a letter from my town's mayor, like in mm-hmm. everything, like I have all my ducks in a row and, uh, I do want to become an Italian citizen because, you know, we own a little property here, uh, a little house and stuff like that. Like I just want to be able to travel to Italy, like as easy as possible. Right. Like my dad and mom both have, uh, the Italian citizenship and it's like when they land, mm-hmm. I've, I've traveled with them and I traveled without them. And when they land, it's like, you know, you go through, the European line. It's super uh, quick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. It's super easy. So like for me, I kind of want to like use leverage from both. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, I, I definitely get that. I mean, there's, especially having been through that myself, like I've been on that side before I got my Italian citizenship recognized and after, and just on the practical side, if you're trying to enter into Italy or travel around Europe, there's a definite difference. And, more on a personal note, like even I've had situations with a, a with a family member of mine where we went to Brazil. I was a Brazilian citizen. This other part of uh, this other family member was not a Brazilian citizen. So it's the, I can relate. It's very strange to have to be kind of separated in a way. It's like we're together. We're family. But we sh- and so we should be together. This is us. Why are we being 
put into two different lines being cast into this this world mm-hmm. so differently exactly exactly and so for you do you imagine yourself staying the rest of your life in america or would you really like at some point to maybe settle down in italy honestly the only thing because i i mean i think about this a lot i would like to mm-hmm. go back and forth if that was possible I get you. so mm-hmm. in other words like have two places where I could stay. Even, I mean, I love Milano. I love Rome. Um, the hometowns I love, but I know I can't work there. You know what I'm saying? But I right. do know I could work in Milan and Rome if I really wanted to, especially with mm-hmm. what we have going on. You know, like I, right. I feel like there will You've be already got a some day. Connections. Exactly. I feel like there will be a day where I could kind of break some bread in Italy and um, support myself and, that's really what it is. I would love to experience it too, man. I mean, the one thing that holds me back a lot is, you know, I have two kids, twins, you know? Right. So, you know, I can't be gone for too long, but of course, you know, uh, that's just, um, you know, maybe when they're a little older, if I could, if, I mean, I have no plans on stopping what we're doing here at growing up Italian. So I know we'll be oh, around good. for I'm a glad long to hear time, that. you know, I know well, I'm happy to we'll hear be that. around for a long time, man. So, you got to keep it up, brother. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. I mean, listen, um, I don't know when this podcast is going to drop, but mm-hmm. we're planning, if everything goes okay, we're dropping the podcast I did with Feta Basta last week. So for okay. me, that was like the biggest, biggest podcast. I mean, it's like the first time from when we started this page as a meme page that we're connected to the biggest things that are going on in Italy. So mm-hmm. I'm really hoping I could create that platform that directly connects what's going on in Italy to like Italian Americans or uh, people of Italian descent that moved away from Italy. Like Very I'm, cool. I'm hoping to be the conduit to those two, you know? That's awesome. If you're ever looking for somebody who can be a part of that, that's kind of got that American kind of perspective here in Italy, like definitely hit me up because I, of course, I love that of connection course, yeah. between the two countries. It's, that's I mean, why, for me, that's it's why become when you so asked important. Me, that's why when you asked me to be on, I was like, right away, I would say, yeah, because, um, you know, I, I, I got that vibe from you. Like, you remind me of, like the way Christy is, like the same thing, the same story that you guys left America, you moved to Italy, and, you know, you, you created um, that lane for yourself. You have a sandwich shop. Yes. In Williamsburg. In, or that's what, is it that's somewhere what pays else? the bills. <laughs> so how did that end up coming to be is that something that your parents started or that you started my dad my dad started that when i was like four or five years old and uh-huh. uh, i grew i grew up in the business basically he started as like a small fruit stand vegetable store and um eventually like he started selling sandwiches and hot food <laughs> and then it became what it is today i i mean i grew up in the business i was 15 years old i made my first menu wow my dad doesn't really write english you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So like I grew up in it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a family business, you know, work with me, my dad, my sister, my mom's involved, you know, one of those It's really awesome that you have that good old fashioned family business. There aren't enough of those left around. No, it's super rare. Uh, it has its ups and downs, you know, we, uh, sometimes we want to kill each other, <laughs> but, uh, of luckily course. that's why, um, you know, I love doing what I do at Growing Up Italian, too, because, you know, my dad kind of, like, loves doing certain things a certain way. So, like, I get to show him, like, look what I do in my way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's cool. And, I, and I've also implemented what I do in Growing Up Italian with, uh, mm-hmm. with the panini shop because, you know, we, we do take um, social media serious. Like, you know, mm-hmm. everything we do is a certain plan. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like. We make sure we have a certain amount of content for every week. You know, it's really strategic so we, with that. So at the end of the day, you and I do very similar things, yes, just kind yes. of within That's what I was going to say spheres. before. That's what I was going to say yeah. before, yeah. And yeah, maybe we That's need to figure out some way of, uh, maybe we need to figure out some way of making something together, like a good old fashioned Any, combination. Anything, <laughs> anything you want to throw my way, let me know, you know? Hell yeah. No, I mean, if there's something, I, I can't say I have anything right now, but like my gears are always grinding. Like if I, if I meet somebody, and especially gonna, like you, you're going like, to hit me up. You're going to hit me up after this call and tell me you have an idea. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so definitely. That's no, I, that, that's, 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> but I'm curious though, like with the growing up Italian project that you guys have got going, the podcast, mm-hmm. the Instagram, and everything that you do online, has that come? I mean, you mentioned that you've. It seems like you've learned from that and applied that to the shop. But has that fed into any clientele for the business? People coming for, in, people. To, to well, the sandwich the, shop. So, like, growing up Italian, people come into the sandwich shop. Yeah, yeah. I would say a little more recently with Clubhouse, I've met a lot of people uh-huh. from New York. Like, I gotta come when I'm in, you know. But really, kind of always got that. But now. When so like I think the biggest difference with Clubhouse versus like let's say DMing somebody is like mm-hmm. when you're on the phone with somebody you get so much more of a convo done you know yeah. like it's like yeah, yeah. you know like you could literally tell somebody a lot about you so quick yeah. versus like in a DM also like I get annoyed like sometimes messaging like paragraphs that's why i always send voice messages like exactly like (laughs) you already know me by now like i don't type i just do voice messages exactly that's like the easiest way you know but um you know me i'm the kind of person i'll just call somebody like okay Mm. and so like from like my experiences working with people that are more the emails and like texting type i don't really work well with them you know like as far as Mm. like you know business goes so that's why for me you know, I feel mostly now with Clubhouse, more people like I've been saying, like, this is what I do. And people are like, oh, I got to come now, you know, and then right. our office is right on top of the panini shop. So for me, like, oh, wow. I'm not going to lie. I work today from uh, like 830 to 145. I came up here, set on my laptop. You know, I have a, this call with you. And then at three o'clock, I have a meeting. So it's like I work. Wow couple hours for my shop and then i'm work a couple hours for going up a time and i'm gonna go home eat sleep and do it all again tomorrow you know what Sounds i mean like a great way to live life <laughs> and <laughs> it's mean, so guess, it's so convenient yeah. that you have it all in the same place it's like well yeah, all right bro, time it, to finish up with the shop <laughs> if it wasn't if it wasn't all in one place it would be extremely difficult you know i can imagine yeah yeah no there's sometimes because, that convenience of being able to take your 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 day job and then your passion project and just have that convenience allows for so much more creativity and just ability to get your thoughts out immediately rather than, yeah. okay, now I got to schlep over to the place and do the thing. It's and set 30 up the gear minutes and away. This. You got to set exactly. it up. This, that. That's the one thing that I'm extremely lucky that mm-hmm. I'm able to do this. And also, I'm not going to lie. I mean, the reason why I think we're the most important Italian American brand is because we're in New York. We're in Brooklyn. Like, right the heart of Italian American culture, in my opinion, like anybody you ask, they're like, Oh my, no, no. My grandfather was from Brooklyn or my great grandfather was from Brooklyn. Like so many people, Brooklyn's like a revolving door. Like people come and eventually they get out, you know, but then there's always new people that come into Brooklyn. So now it might not Mm -hmm. be Italian immigrants anymore like that, even Mm -hmm. though there is some, like I know a lot of people fresh off the boat that come here, but it's just basically Brooklyn's always like, you know, fresh new people that kind of make a way for themselves. And then right. when it's time to like purchase property or something, then they move to the suburbs, whether it's like Long Island, Queens, you know what I mean? I so Brooklyn, you. I see yeah, it as no. like a revolving door, you know? I mean, uh, to be honest, I actually don't know. I'm not as familiar with New York just because my family, when they arrived in America, they went to Boston. They were like those outliers that didn't make their way to New York, even though they all went through Ellis Island. So there's, there's I, a lot I, of people in, in Boston, though, a lot oh, of times yeah. in Boston. No, like where my grandfather grew up in East Boston, when he grew up, like everybody was speaking dialect. Everybody was speaking Italian and he grew up hearing that. And so even for him even when he was uh, he ended up being in world war ii he his english uh suffered because he fought, he was he fought around. for america he was in the coast guard for america yeah oh wow yeah yeah That's funny. so he was yeah, I'm, I'm, like, yeah, I, I give you credit rafael for being like super like into your culture because a lot of people when um you know that their parents were here for the world wars you hear a lot of stories that the culture gets like doesn't get passed down. So the yeah. fact it got passed down to you, bro, you're super fortunate. I mean, especially oh, from blessed. my experiences doing this, 
Like I've been doing this for a couple of years now. So I hear a lot of people's stories and all the time you hear people say like, Oh, my grandfather and grandmother didn't teach my mom Italian because mm -hmm. you know, we were at war with Italians for a couple of years. Right. If you think about it, like you were looked yeah. down upon for being Italian. So no, the fact even you especially when Italians, yeah, no, I, I really do feel blessed. I mean, the thing is, even in my family, like how it went was because my father wasn't around. My grandfather actually ended up kind of being in the picture a lot because we were growing up. It was either some combination of us living with them or them living with us. And like it was this kind of just like good old Italian American kind of vibe this the family. And so growing up my life, my father figure was my grandfather who had that direct effect on my life, carrying that passion that he had for his his identity and who he was being a hundred percent and just Italian, like Italian American guy, like mm -hmm. just good old fashioned Italian American guy who loved his country, but also still had a passion for the homeland. And so even it in a way skipped a little bit my my uh, my my mother's generation in the family because my grandfather was working all the time. And so they didn't necessarily get some of that influence like her and her siblings uh, that I got just that because got, he was yeah. so much a part of my life yeah, and even exactly. amongst my cousins. That's and I like, how, That's kind of how this, this whole works, man. It's crazy. Yeah. You have kids, they're raised by, you know, you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, no, and that's just old school how it was like the parents are doing even here in Italy. Now I walk around my town you'll see plenty of baby carriages around, but more often than not, it's the nonni that are pushing them around. Yeah, because you got to work thing. and make the money, you know? Yeah, no, but I mean, like, really think about it. it. It helps to carry that generational love and that 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 passion for the family and the culture down to the next generation. Fine, there are those times, of course, where it just doesn't hit in that one generation or that one individual because maybe they don't connect with their grandparent. Ah, that no, old fart, he didn't know anything. And yeah, no, exactly. That's that's kind of how it works, man. Like my uh, my parents, when I was growing up, they worked all day, and I. I grew up at my mm -hmm. nonna's house. Now with my kids, I see my parents super involved in their life. So it's definitely that's definitely like the circle of Italian life. Like, yeah. You know? yeah. Or a lot of people, a, lo <laughs> a lot of people do it. You know what I mean? But there was no way I was ever like being raised by like a nanny or anything. Like it was my yeah, nonna. No. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that was a dirty word growing up. Like yeah. babysitter nanny is like. Yeah, yeah. My mother was horrified morals. the first time she had to hire one. Like she like when we weren't living with my grandparents or they weren't living with us like it was difficult for her to have to think about like somebody else with my kid like no this is not okay this is yeah, yeah, yeah. it was no just way. out of desperation at the time yeah, yeah because no i mean way. family that's the that's who takes care of the kids <laughs> exactly that's a circle man yeah no but getting back maybe a little bit to what you do I'm just curious, just to, again, especially because your your parents are from Italy and you've had so much time here. How has it been for you guys to balance that catering, that idea of catering to the Amer uh, the American palate and the American tastes, while also balancing a traditional flavor mm -hmm. and combination of ingredients? Well, I mean, you could look at our social media, man. Especially, um, a lot of it is trying to show people that don't know as much as American, like as much about the Italian stuff. Cause I will say most of our people are probably not first generation. They're probably, mm -hmm. you know, second or third. Yeah. So it's more like trying to make people really appreciate where they came from. I mean, and sometimes doing it with laughs, you know, we have another Instagram page called I love my nonni where we like accept um, submission videos and stuff. So like we're always posting no like no 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 videos. I mean, especially like Nona Pia or something like that. Yeah, like especially like she's featured on the page all the time. But exactly, right. not only her, but people all around the world because like nonies are the best, bro. Like they're so oh, funny. I, yeah, I posted a hilarious video today of um like a no no like dancing. He had like sunglasses on and like a, a <laughs> bandana. Like, it's just, to me, that's like the people I get along with the most, you know? So that's kind of what we try to push 
with our platform is uh, that whole family aspect of it and showing the different, that. the different styles, the Italian American families and even Italian family. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, yeah. you know, there's a common ground in the middle somewhere. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I really, like I said, I respect what you guys do and I love that you have that family attitude and that, that respect for family just because it ends up missing in so much of pop culture, modern culture. And I'm curious though, because you are this, this uh, pillar, so to speak, of the Italian community between you and everybody else at Growing Up Italian, mm -hmm. yeah. how do you see the modern state of Italian Americanness, and especially because we're on that little bit of the younger side where we're kind of that, that in between generation between the kids mm -hmm. and the older generation. How do you see things for Italian Americans right now? Oh man, I mean, that's a, that's like a, a crazy question. I mean, <laughs> I could answer it in so many <laughs> ways, like depending on which day you asked me, but um, I mean, I feel like the Italian culture is like not cool again, but like mm -hmm. super trendy on social media. So you'll see mm -hmm. like a lot of kids doing the TikTok stuff about being Italian, uh, yeah. stuff like that. Um, you see stuff on Clubhouse of, you know, Italians all over the world talking, um, you know, Instagram too. Like on social media, I feel like you see it a lot. But um, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like people are really like, at least because I, I think just because of maybe my algorithm from the stuff I like. So maybe somebody else could give you a different answer. But for me, I see mm -hmm. people being super proud to be Italian. And um, I'm just hoping it gets passed on, you know. I hope it doesn't end with me. I'm there with you. I'm definitely there with you. I mean, and I think it's guys like what you're doing and everybody else involved with your project and holding that, holding that fort, so to speak. And even... Yeah. I'm not necessarily in that same type of space, but to me, it's just as important that like, that's part of why I do my videos is that exploration of being an Italian American, having transplanted to Italy. And here's the crap that I'm going through. Here's my struggles coming from that American attitude and figuring out how the Italians deal with things and do things because mm -hmm. there are some major cultural differences between the Italian community in Italy and of course, around the country, people the one, change. The one thing I will tell you, the one thing uh -huh. I will tell you that I'm, I get super annoyed with, yeah. and you know, I've flipped out about so many times is like people that try to learn about their culture, and then like native Italians like putting them down, saying you're not real Italian, you're not real Italian. Yeah. Like that's one of the things yeah. that pisses me off. And then like people that come from another country, they're born in Italy, and then. Mm -hmm people say they're not Italian. So it's like, yeah. what is Italian then? Like, you know, just this let is, us know. This is one you of my favorite saying? subjects. Yeah, so, no, I, I'm i there podcast, with you. But, but oh, like, we should definitely do that. I, like, yeah. seriously, we should do a, yeah. an episode just on that subject sometime. When I've put out a lot of content about Me too. <laughs> this, particular, this particular subject, I mean, like I, we, we kind of try to make it funny. Like, what is an Italian? Yeah. Just so we know. But at the end of the day, like, what is an Italian like? Because since you guys make the rules, you know what I'm saying? Like, since people always have something to say, like, send me an yeah. email what it is so I know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, no, I've, 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 I've uploaded those annoying. videos. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm like I said, I'm there with you, and I've done videos on that subject, and I have had Italians like try to quantify what is an Italian, and there are sometimes it's just like, no, you're not an Italian. You just can't be just because you grew up in America. Simple end of story. And even for somebody like you, first generation, of course, how could you be Italian? You're yeah, exactly. you were born in America. Like, what do you connect with in Italy? And you only the speak day, the dialect. Then the day, Raphael, like, I'm gonna be honest, like, I have none to prove to anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because Joe, Joe Schmo thinks I'm not Italian, like, it's not gonna stop me from doing what I want to do, you know? No, so. and that's the thing. It's their problem, not your problem. And uh, exactly. like I said, you and I probably have the exact same opinion on this. I mean, clearly it seems that way so far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's like something I get super annoyed with. Like, you know, mm. the other day in Clubhouse, somebody said, like, I'm not Italian, I'm not Italian, I'm Sicilian. So I'm like, wait, hold on, what did you say? <laughs> and then they're like, you know, it was a whole discussion. And I'm like, all right, right, I get it. Like, there's a lot of stuff that went on in Sicily. Like, they, you know, 
whatever. Like this is a whole nother episode, but I'm like, yeah. do me a favor. Like when you're in, like when you're in one of my rooms, one of my club rooms, I don't want to hear any kind of divide like that. Like everybody was like, wow. Like everybody was like, yo, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And it's just about, you know, leading by example, man. You know? Definitely. I mean, and especially in the type of position that you're in, it's great that you have the ability to, f- to, to really say, Hey, that's not cool. We're here together, whether you like it or not. And I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm the first one to make jokes about it. Like saying, you know, Calabrese girls hard headed or, you know what I'm saying? Like the typical yeah, no, but stereotypes. Th- where's the problem with that? There is no problem yeah, with having exactly. both sides of it. I mean, it's important to embrace that. Hey, we are Italian, no matter where in the country, but at the same time, there are those regional differences. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, that's what I'm saying. There's a fine line. And um, yeah. I just, there, there needs to be, like, some kind of unity at the end of the day. I am 100% yeah. there with you. And, you know, I think that might actually be the best place to end this off, that we need a lot yeah. more We'll do. We'll together. do a part two. We'll do a part two. Yeah. Oh, we'll definitely. Like we're we're gonna have to make this happen because you and I plenty have plenty to talk about. There's no yeah, end to man, what absolutely. we could go down into. So Sabino, Curcio, thank you so much for joining me. Good if people everything, aren't aware of you already, how can they find you online? And thank you. Uh um I mean growing up battalions, pretty much growing up battalion every day. Instagram, we have um Facebook, Facebook fan page, Facebook group. Um, you can find us on Clubhouse too, since it's a Trinity thing. Yep. Uh, TikTok, <laughs> Twitter, anywhere, YouTube, like we're on every every Perfect. social platform there is. Well, that makes it easy then. So, <laughs> thank, thank you, you again Raphael. so much, man. Looking right, forward to connecting with, with you again. Thank you, man. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm.